Hi there, I'm Danny Gregory, and this is Draw With Me. And as you just saw, we drew together last week, and uh, we drew famous monster movies. No, fi famous movie monsters. And uh, I just love seeing all these different interpretations of Frankenstein and Dracula and so forth. And um, if, if, by the way, we're going to be drawing today, if, by the way, you would like to um, maybe see your drawing up there next week, um, please post it on social media or in our schoolyard. And if you do, put this hashtag. Uh, here it is, SBS Draw With Me. And um, we'll find it. We'll include it. We'll celebrate it. And even if you don't want it there, that's fine. You don't have to... Uh, doesn't have to be part of the opening credits of this of this event, but um, we'd like to see it anyway. So please please do share what you make with hashtag SBS Draw with me. So yes, that is a fun thing. It's fun to to see all the different ways that that we are being creative together. I love seeing all the different interpretations of the same uh, input passes through all of our different brains, travels down our various hands, comes out of our pens and onto the page. And it's amazing to see all the different ways that we interpret the world around us. It's also an interesting reminder that um, there's no right way, there's no wrong way. There's just your way. And your way may be one way one, one day and a different way the next. Um, essentially what we want to do is express ourselves, make a mark, however small, on the world, and let the things that are going on inside of us come out on the page. And, you know, drawing is just an endlessly interesting uh, journey that we're all on together, or apart these days, both apart and together, I hope. Um, but yeah, it's, it is our way of, of saying, this is what I saw, this is what I felt, and these two things are coming together in lines on a piece of paper. It's kind of an amazing, miraculous thing. Too often, I think, when we sit down to draw, particularly when we're first learning our way, we struggle with whether or not what we draw is good enough. Is it good enough? Is it good at all? Is it good? And good, I don't know, I'm not sure what good means. Does good mean that your drawing looks just like the thing that you looked at? I don't know. Your camera, your cell phone, can look at something and can make an image out of it. Is that good? Is that better? Is that better than what you can make? I don't know. I think it's much more interesting to know about you. I want to know about you. I want to know how you feel, how you see, what you're thinking, what you think is important. Uh, and that is what drawing does, is it takes this input, this subject matter, this thing we're looking at, and it says, okay, how do I feel about it? And in lots of ways that we can't even control, it turns it into something. And, um, you know, we can have, we can have intense um, sort of expectations and plans, but what makes it more interesting is when all these random and serendipitous things come into play and what turns out on the page is pretty different. So um, what do I want to talk about today? Well, I want to talk about a few things, but I, I came across this quote, and um, I think it is an interesting statement of something that I think is true quite a lot. Um, it is by a sculptress named Elizabeth King, and the quote is, process saves us from the poverty of our intentions. Kind of highfalutin. But let's unpack it for a second, because I think it's worth thinking about, particularly in light of what our intentions are. So, pr 
process means commitment. It means habit. It means doing things on a regular basis, whether we feel like it or not. A few days ago, we, well, a week ago or so, is it a week? God, it feels like longer. Anyway, um, the beginning of an extremely long week, um, my wife and I had our belongings arrive here in Phoenix where we live, and uh, they came from our, our apartment that we had lived in in New York. We unpacked all of our stuff, and one of the things, two of the things that we unpacked, <laughs> I'll get to the point in a minute, indulge me for a second. Two of the things that we unpacked were our Peloton exercise bike and our bathroom scale. I'm sure like you, you haven't necessarily looked after yourself as well as possible this year. And certainly when I stepped onto that scale for the first time in probably a year, I was, yeah, I wasn't that happy with what I saw. So... I've committed to getting onto my Peloton exercise bicycle every single morning. And every single morning, I lie in bed and I fight with myself. And I have this discussion about why I don't really need to do this every day or why I don't need to do it at all. And fortunately, so far, every day I have one part of me has won that battle. And the part of me that is the part that's focusing on process, habit. That part of me that says, no, I don't care what you say, we're getting up and we're doing that. So I have this, you know, this intention to do this, but I can wrestle with that intention and I can change my mind about it. And I can say, um, yeah, I'm going to do it or I'm not going to do it. But process means I do it regardless. And this applies to art, to our art making, because so much of so many of us would love to to be really great at making art. But we struggle with it. We struggle with it because of the poverty of our intentions. You know, that we, we're just not doing it on a regular enough basis to really push through the blocks, push through the limitations of what we think is our talent and our ability. We need help. And that help can come in the form of process. But not everybody has the tenacity to adhere to process, to say, yep, I'm going to do it no matter what. I don't care. I'm getting up. I'm getting on that bike. I don't care. I'm opening my sketchbook, and I'm going to do another one of these lousy drawings, but I'm going to do it. So we need help. We need help to stick to it. But first of all, we need to make a commitment. We need to say, this is what I do. And part of of adhering to that is thinking about what that means. This is what I do. This is what artists do. And I am an artist. And artists draw. Artists paint. Artists make stuff. They make good stuff and they make bad stuff. But they make stuff. They don't sit around arguing with themselves all day long about whether or not they should make stuff, but they make stuff. So what we need to do is to get to the point where we say, yes, I am an artist. I may not tell anybody else that. I may be embarrassed by it. I wouldn't put it down on, on, on an application, perhaps. I might not even tell my spouse that I am an artist. But I am an artist, and one needs to commit to that. And when you commit to that, it helps you to form all kinds of behaviors, okay? So I, I could go on about this, and I probably will again. But for now, let's just leave it at that. You are an artist. You are an artist. You need to think about what that means. You need to define that for yourself. You need to think about how to continually reconfirm that with yourself. But once you do have a glimmer of that as an identity, it doesn't have to be your entire identity. You could also say, I'm an artist. I'm a parent. I'm an accountant. I'm a, whatever it is, you can be lots of things, but one of them is being an artist. And what artists do, they make stuff. So that's what you're going to do. And that means you have a process. And that process is what pushes you through, gets you over those humps and valleys. Okay, that's enough of that. What I want to talk about is related, but different, and it's this. 
It's this thing that you see me talk about. For the last few weeks, I've talked about whatever this mysterious thing is. And finally, I'm ready to actually give you details. Because I think this is a thing that, it, that will help you to develop process, will help you to get better at making art, will help you to have more fun at making art, will help you to accomplish those things inside of you that have been kicking around possibly your entire life. Those things that say, I feel the need to be this thing. But lots of things have gotten in the way of my being this thing. Responsibilities, inner voices, money, all these things that I've needed and haven't been able to get have, it, have stopped me from doing this. And part of what we're going to do with this is we're going to break through that and give you this freedom to do this, to make this part of your life, to put you on a journey with other people, just like we are today. Today we're on a journey, right? We're on a journey with lots of others who are doing this too, who are drawing with us. And that's what this is going to be about. Okay, so I'm not going to talk about it here, really, because this is not a, an infomercial where I'm going to tell you about stuff. But I do want you to know more. So in order to do that, I want you to make sure that you receive my emails. You know, because every week I do emails. Um, sorry, my camera's going a bit berserk here. Okay. Every week I write an essay. On fr I send it out on Friday. And it's an essay, a thought. A thought about what I think is important, what I think is interesting, what I think is provocative, funny even. And I send it to you. I send it to you if you tell me where to send it to. So that's what, what, that's what will happen when you sign up for Danny's List. And um, tomorrow, I'm going to send out the first kind of more in-depth description of, you know, um, what I've been talking about all along with this thing, okay? So I just need you to get on my list, subscribe, and then it's free. It's free. It's not a, it's not a get-rich-quick scheme. It's not a mark. It's not even actually usually about marketing. In this one case, I'm just going to tell you a bit more about why it is that I'm doing this thing. Because I want you to understand the history of, of how I've come up with this idea. And why, and I think that's important for you to understand why it can work for you and why it can fit into your life. So, okay? So we'll get to that. All right. Next, I just want to also remind you, by the way, that if you would like me to send you further inspiration, things that can help you to develop process, that can inspire you on a daily basis or semi-daily, no, semi-weekly, multiple, a few times a week, um, I can, we can have a texting relationship, a text uh, relationship via text where I will send you things that I think are interesting, things that I've drawn, things that I'm thinking about in a little text, in a little picture, and it'll come to your phone and you can look at it and you can write back to me if you'd like, if you have any thoughts about it, that would be great. Um, and I'm, I get texts from people that are fantastic and so interesting and, and wonderful. And it's a sort of a weird little community that exists on my phone. So if you'd like to join that community, just text me, 919-298-8117. Uh, it only works right now in America, but who knows? It will change soon, I hope. Okay, enough of all that. Let's start to draw, okay? Today, I'm in one of those moods I don't know if you ever get this feeling of like, you just want to kind of get detail-y. You know, you want to sort of, sometimes I want to be bold and I want to use big brushes and markers and colors. But today I'm feeling kind of like niggly, a little niggly, a little like I want to focus on something kind of complicated and draw it a complex thing, okay? So let's give it a whirl. Here's what I'm thinking. Here is what I want to draw today. It's little um, and it is, a skeleton. It is a bird skeleton. It's a pigeon skeleton, actually. And if you'd like to download this reference, you can. In fact, um, I've printed mine out. There it is. So I'm going to draw because it's a little bit bigger than drawing on the computer screen. So if you want to, you can you can download it. You can open it in a separate window. I'll also put it up on the screen. So, but it'll be a little bit littler. So, but it's a pigeon. So, um, yuck, Monica says. This is not yuck. This is not yuck. This is a, this is an important aspect of 
art, and let me tell you a bit about it. So the history of art is full of people, artists, great artists, drawing bones, skulls, skeletons. They're important parts of, um, I mean, this is Cezanne doing a beautiful job. Um, you know, this is Albrecht Dürer. I'm sure you've seen these kinds of pieces of art before. And, um, you know, here we have Franz Hals. There's this tradition in art, uh, which is known as memento mori. I think that's how it is, or memento mori, which means remember your death or think of, contemplate your death. Um, because that is an important part of life, right, is recognizing the limits of our life and what is important in our lives. And um, here's Van Gogh, the uh, skeleton smoking a cigarette. Uh, Picasso. So yes, so there's, um, there's lots of different um, interpretations of this, uh, you know. And of course, here's some, here's some other important uh, <laughs> aspects of it. Here we see Charlie Brown's skeleton. And of course, Homer Simpson's. SpongeBob. I love this Lego man, a Lego sort of anatomy exercise. Um, here we have Felix the cat and Goofy. Mickey Mouse. And Pac-Man. All right, we're not going to do any of those things, though. Instead, we are going to draw this pigeon. And, you know, they are, as Joy Marie says, a long time ago in figure drawing class, I spent hours drawing skeletons, but that was then. Well, you're going to spend minutes drawing a skeleton. Spend as much time as you want doing this. But this is what I feel like doing today, because I feel like getting niggly. You know, I'd like to, I feel like using, um, you know, like maybe a 0.3, maybe even we'll get smaller, maybe we'll get into... Uh, a point one, okay. So these are uni pins, um, and you know, yeah. So those are the pens of the pens for today. Here's the paper for today, and let's get into it, man. Let's get into it. Let's start drawing. I think I'm going to start biggish. Maybe I'll go into small, small, smaller detail. Um, cup of officials. Sketchbook School Coffee. One thing I want to do, actually, is I want to look at this, oh, let me, let's have a look at this overall picture, and just think about measuring, you know, just, I just want to make sure I fit it on the page. So, what is the height? One, let's just say, let's just measure his width, right? His width is about that, and then you go, okay, to there, to there. So, it's, it's roughly roughly um, one wide and just a little bit under two high, okay? So again, that's one wide and roughly two high. I'm a little bit off, but that's gonna be a bit wonky, but that's okay. So that just, gives, that just tells me like, yeah, because this page is again, this wide by about that high. So it should fit, it should balance nicely on the page. Um, once we get it all figured out. Where do I put this one? Okay. Let's let's see. Let's have a look at him up close. So I'm gonna start with his bill. Beak, bill or beak. Oh, it sounds like there's a helicopter outside.
feels roughly okay. Screw up that line a little bit, but it's alright. And then we come back down here. We go around. We go down. So there's all these little delicate bones in here. Pigeons. I had a lot of pigeons when I lived in New York City. There were pigeons galore. Here in Phoenix, it's more about doves. Which are nicer. Pigeons are, at least in New York, pigeons are not are not the nicest of things. Sort of flying rats, they call them, which I think is a bit unkind. But, um... But they're certainly not not charmers, not charming creatures. I think I made his beak a little bit too thick, like duck-like almost. Well, again, um, what I really want to do with this drawing, and again, thinking about my intention in doing this drawing, is to get into details, you know, which, which may or may not mean accuracy. You never know. You never know whether you'll, whether I'll, I mean, it might just be a lot of interesting details that aren't quite snapping together like Lego pieces, um, but are instead a bit, bit off. But uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Please. Okay, good. It's a little vertebra. And it's really, it is to me lots of fun to draw very complicated things sometimes. Because what happens when you draw something super complex is you quickly run into things that you don't really know the names of, you know, and you, and you, um, so rather than saying like, oh, I know how to draw a carburetor, you just go, okay, there's like a rectangle and it has a line coming out of it. And then there's another thing and all that kind of stuff makes it, helps you to get into this drawing zone where you're not, you know, judging and analyzing, but you're just observing. And that tends to make for a more positive drawing experience. Um, and, you know, in this case, I don't really know the names of any of these bones or whether they're the right shape, or even if I'm leaving some of them out, it doesn't really matter. I'm not concerned with that. I'm just enjoying this experience of of studying this set of shapes and thinking about how they all snap together. How one sits on top of the other, intersects another, that, that, all those sorts of little bits that kind of make up the, the skeleton, skeleton is this jigsaw puzzle of pieces. become very involved with birds since spending time out here during the pandemic. Spent a lot of time um, sitting out in our garden, looking at all the different kinds of birds, listening to them, uh, seeing their relationships. It's been like a, one of the highlights really of this experience. And thought that occurs to me quite often is the birds don't know about the pandemic. They don't know, they don't care. For them, you know, they, they certainly have lives of their own that are full of threats, but ultimately 
you know, this is our problem. And, you know, here we have these beautiful days, you know, all, all through spring and summer, beautiful days that we've filled with dread and all these concerns that we have every day about what's going to happen and how are things going to be. And the birds just don't care. The birds probably wouldn't care if we just dropped off the face of the earth. Some birds would. Pigeons probably would because they tend to live off us because they're sort of parasitic. Um, and they eat our trash, so they would miss us. But I don't think most of the birds in my backyard would really care at all if we were gone. They're much more concerned with things like the, the hawk that comes by periodically. You know, they, they're not affected by this aspect of nature, nor are the trees, nor are the stars. None of them are, care about what we're going through. They don't care about our problems. They don't care about any of the things that are making us crazy. And so spending time with nature is a way to kind of get perspective on it, you know? It's like when you look at the endlessness of the of the universe and you look at those the zillions of stars up there and you just feel you can feel small and insignificant, you know? All of our troubles don't amount to a hill of beans kind of thing. Or you can sort of look at it with wonder and just go, wow, you know? I'm connected to all this stuff. And my problems, if I can look at them from some other perspective, maybe I'll feel differently about them. I don't know. That's sort of what occurs to me when things feel grim. I've already screwed this up. I'm okay with that, I guess. I'll say that to you. I'll tell you that I'm okay with it, but I kind of wish that I that I had managed to uh, fit his tail onto the page, but I'm already recognizing that despite my confidence in measuring him, I've already screwed that part up. But that's, a, that's and, I, and also this bit should be, this is way too big now. So he's gonna have some, some challenges. He's not going to be completely... But you know what? I, I think until I looked at this picture, I had no idea what a pigeon skeleton looks like. So honestly, if it was bigger or longer here or there, who cares? Nobody would know. And, and I, you know, uh, before I looked at this, before I googled pigeon skeleton, wouldn't have known either. And honestly, I could throw this photo reference away and never know again what mistakes I made. And so it'll look like kind of a cool detailed drawing, but more importantly, it's like I'm getting to enjoy this experience of looking at all these pieces, one after the other, and, and how they fit together. And all, I mean, every one of these pieces of neck bone is different and different shaped. They all have some kind of amazing engineering and function that I can't even begin to understand. And that's that's cool. And if I if I ruin this experience, which I could do very easily, right? I could ruin it by saying, oh, what am I doing wrong? But instead I could say, wow, look at, look at how that curves around and look at this piece of, I mean, f did, did you even realize that pigeons had this, this giant bone here? I, I never really thought about it. It's like they have like a giant sort of, I don't know, huge breastbone that's sticking down between their legs. It's just, what a weird piece of design or adaptation, I guess. It's just so interesting. And again, I hadn't really thought about it ever until now. And now I'm experiencing this. So that's, you know, that's another cool aspect of drawing is learning. You know, that we have this opportunity to learn about something by drawing it. And when you think about when we first started to draw, right, when we were first obsessed with drawing, it was also the time, which, right, which was, you know, again, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 
when we were first drawing, we were learning about the world. Drawing is, was our way of understanding things, of, of creating, you know, the, the understanding the associations between things or the logic of things. And um, it, it's like the simple guide of, of tracing and making our own reality, our own interpretation of reality. This is mommy, this is daddy, this is a house, this is a monster, this is an airplane, this is a truck. All these things, making them our own, that's the opportunity that, uh, that drawing gives you to have. Here you are, this small creature with no real control, but then you make something and on the page, you have control over it. You have made this reality. And uh, you know that's a gift that we can still give ourselves now. It doesn't go away. You know, this, you sit down with a blank piece of paper and you make something brand new that's never been there before. How cool is that? Or you interpret a skeleton and suddenly, you know, it's turning into a bird bit by bit. So we may not have that many other opportunities to do this in our life to have this sort of virtual experience. It's virtual in that we're, you know, creating something that didn't exist here on the page. Sometimes you draw something, when you draw a complex thing like this, and then you go, oh, th those are the ribs, I see. His ribs are kind of very different from what I think of as ribs, but yeah, it's all kind of coming together. And um, then I'm a little bit lost in here. Okay, this, so this is like his kind of knee joint is down here. And I have to cross the gutter because of whatever. What I probably should have done or, or could have done is to um, just make some little marks on the page at the very beginning to say to myself, okay, just remember, like, this is where you need to fit this bit of him. And this is where you need to fit, you know, his pelvis or whatever it is is going to go there. And his, I should have, could have, might have done some more planning. But this is my nature. I am fairly impetuous in these things. And uh, rush, rush. I'm a, Ru I'm a Russian. I'm always a Russian through life. Okay, so that's kind of the bits. I think I want to take this smaller pen now. Take the smaller pen. And uh, so this is a, a zero one and just get a little bit more into the hatching. I think part of this kind of desire to do something small and detailed also means a desire to to cross hatch i think i think it's calming and um gives one a sense of control to do cross hatching but also it's uh The nice thing about cross hatching is it is cumulative. So, you know, you, any given line that you do may not be perfect, but the accumulation of lines starts to create the effect. So that can make you um, can make you relax. Can make you say, you know what, this line doesn't matter, that line doesn't matter, this line doesn't matter, that line doesn't matter. But somehow together they come to mean something. And so also, because I'm not really thinking that much 
about every decision I'm making. I'm allowing my body to make these decisions. And my body is way better at drawing than my brain is. Our bodies are pretty amazing. I mean, if you think of your body as something that is programmable, right? If you think about when you were programmed, for instance, to talk or to walk, right? You figured these things out and then you just let it be. You never needed to rethink how to walk, you know, unless you had some a stroke or some kind of injury. But generally, it's just become second nature. Your body learns this thing and then it just does it that way every time. So something like hatching, your body just knows, okay, just and you need to essentially rebuild your neural structure. You need to teach your nerves how to move a very small distance, draw a line, and then move another very small distance and draw a line. You're not born knowing how to do that. You learn how to do it. And, but once you've learned how to do it, it's better to leave it alone. Don't think about it intensely because the more you think about it, the more you course correct. Again, if you think back to a skill like learning to walk, if you had to constantly think about how to walk while you're doing it, what is it? Oh, am I having connection problems? Let me plug this in. Apparently I'm having connection problems. So I'm just plugging in, hold on a second, I'm plugging in a cable. Give me one second. How annoying. I hate technology sometimes, don't you? All right. I'm plugged in. Hopefully that'll make a difference. Um, where was I? Talking about developing neural pathways. Kinesthetic memory. Thank you, Claire. Kinesthetic memory. That's apparently the term. Teaching our bodies how to do something. You know, athletes certainly know how to do that. We don't think of that as, you know, because what happens so often is you say, I don't know how to draw. No talent, don't know how to do it. So therefore, we don't need to even try because we can say, well, I just can't get to that. I can't do it. Can't. But the reality is if you think about it, it's basically just a process, a process that you just need to work at a bit. And you say, okay, I'm going to work at this process and I'm going to do a few things. I'm going to develop these physical skills. I'm going to gain some control over my body. And then I'm going to let it go. I'm going to gain some control over my mind so that I'm not constantly derailing um, this process with doubts and questions. I'm just going to establish trust with myself. I'm going to allow myself to be an artist and therefore to have a process that allows me to get in the groove and stay in that groove. I'm going to accept my fallibility, which means that not everything I make is great or perfect, but sometimes I'll surprise myself. And that the goal is not perfection, but rather um, to engage in the process. Because when you engage in the process, which means you show up, and you just do it. When you engage, engage in that process on a regular basis, you start to get pleasure out of the actual process. You know, it's like, again, if you go running every morning, you just start, that's just part of what you do, you know? And you are a runner, and uh, just like you are a toothbrusher. Hi, I'm a toothbrusher, actually. Yeah, yeah, I've been doing it for years. I'm so good at it now, I don't even need to think. I just 
get out the brush and the rest is on automatic and the next thing you know I'm staring out the window brushing my teeth next thing you know I'm done I have amazingly clean teeth and uh, honestly I don't even know how I do it I just don't know I just I've been doing it for years yeah you should try it it's really not that hard well I, I would but I don't I'm just I don't have a talent for toothbrushing I just I don't know well have you have you tried it yeah I tried it once or twice but it just didn't it, I don't know I just wasn't really that good at it. I wasn't you know so I went to the dentist and he said uh, yeah are you are you brushing your teeth well man nah, just I, I I just don't have that talent you know nobody in my family brushes their teeth so just not not really good at it um, I wonder if you could you know maybe pull them all out sorry because I'm going a bit off the rails with this analogy but uh, I hope you get the point which is what is the point I hope you get the point which is that this is a physical skill like any other that you can develop but you need to make a program or as my grandfather used to call it a program you need to make a program that says okay i'm going to do this on a regular basis and when i do i will get better at it i may need some help to establish this process i also may need to set a goal for myself which is why am i doing this and what do i want to get out of it and that what you want to get out of it doesn't have to be oh, i'm going to be a professional artist show in galleries and uh you know be super cool it could be you know what i like to draw it's really fun and i know that if i do it more often it'll become even more fun because i can do new things i can do more things i can do better things i can do it with less stress it helps me to feel better it's just kind of endless right there's just a lot of things that we could uh, get out of this process if we let ourselves and the more you do it i mean i'm right now as you can probably tell possibly tell not thinking a great deal about what i'm doing i'm just sort of doing it i'm just kind of like oh yeah i go there and i do that and how do i do this without thinking it's just like how i ride a bike without thinking it's how i brush my teeth without thinking i've been doing it for a long time i wasn't born with any god-given talents i was i'm just i just showed up i have a process so am i preaching too much am i harping on this too much am i becoming annoying it's possible it's one of my talents um this process of hatching is interesting too because you you keep going back over things and you go you know what this needs to come up a bit this needs to get a bit darker you want to really have a range of different um variations in your tone and that that just takes time of just drawing lots and lots and lots of little tiny lines i was i thought it might be cool to have like a kind of like an odometer on your pen that says how many lines did you draw how much if you put all those lines together how far do they go you know you know how like we try to you know there's that whole like do 10,000 steps a day like what if it was like you know draw 10,000 lines a day what would that be like what would your drawing be like if you did that maybe we need to start that as a as a movement have you done done your lines today uh uh no I was too busy brushing my teeth. All right, I'm feeling better. I'm feeling calmer. I have not been thinking about my death, though. Momenti mori, remember I talked about that? Have I been considering my, my uh, mortality? No. I don't want to today. I'm just going to draw this pigeon bones. Leave it at that. What do you think was happening with Van Gogh when he added that cigarette to the skeleton? 
I don't think of Van Gogh as being have, having a particularly good sense of humor. Do you think he was? Do you think he ended that? He's like, oh, screw it! I'm going to put this stupid. I'm going to give this stupid skeleton a cigarette. Knowing Van Gogh, it might have actually maybe he did it somewhere where there actually was a cigarette in. Them. I don't know. If that's not true. That's not true or fair to him. But I always wonder, like, what was? That's like one of the few visual kind of joke things that you ever see out of him. <sighs> All right. I'm probably going to keep going with this. I might even do some watercoloring on top of him. Maybe. We'll see. I might switch modes from this sort of detailed stuff to just being a bit more colorful. I don't know. I could do that. I had a thought earlier when I was looking at this picture, I thought it might be interesting because I, I think this picture is so dramatic on the black with that, you know, spotlit bones and the bones are so nice and white that maybe that would be another way of approaching this thing is to say, um, draw it on, paint the page black and then draw it in white. I probably couldn't do it in the, with this kind of detail because I don't have any super fine white pens. But um, yeah, see, I'm looking as I work on this, I see where my, my mistakes are revealed by structural problems where lines that are actually bits of bone don't connect with each other. And so it's sort of like, oh, if you look at how this is, it doesn't really where does it go? It's not really connecting properly in here. So, you know, those are things that you kind of discover. Um, you know, I think that this backbone of his is way longer. So, but I made his skull bigger. And I kind of actually like that this crossed the page. I kind of like it. So. I'm just going to leave this sort of planar. I had another thought. Let me show you something here, which is, if you'll excuse me a second, I'm going to cover up this image with another image, which is this one. Yeah, so this is a... Uh, here you have the names of these different bones. The sclerotic ring and the furcula and the sternum and the tibia. Tarsus. And I was kind of thinking, to, uh, and look at that thing, that weird breastbone thing is called a keel. The keel is the bottom of the sternum. Interesting, right? So I think I'm going to label some of these things. I'm going to label them. Just, you know, in the spirit of amateur zoology or zoology the sclerotic ring what is that that's this oh this kind of bony thing around his eye is called the sclerotic ring it's a good word sclerotic feeling just a little sclerotic today There we go, sclerotic ring. How about the furcula? Do I have a furcula? Yes. Yes! Furcula. I was afraid that this would betray the inaccuracy of my drawing. Wait a minute, you don't have, you don't have a furcula? Oh, yes, I do. It's right there. What about this? Sternum? Check. Sternum. Oh, yes, I got that right. And of course, the keel. What else? The femur. Well, that's pretty easy. It's 
diagram isn't naming all of the bones though, so that's not adequate. But there is the sacral vertebra, who I missed, and the, uh, I just love the names of some of these things. So the, this is the tibiotarsus. That is basically his, huh? yes, that's it. Okay, I didn't get that wrong. This is the tibia, is this the femur? <gasps> you see, that's the femur, whoops. That's the femur. And this is the tibiotarsus. Tibiotarsus. Tibio. Paragraph break. Tarsus. What else have we got here? The flanges. Flanges. I know some of you hate the sound. The sound of nibs. The tarso meta metatarsus. That's what this sort of ankle is known as. The tarso metatarsus. And what else do we have? The, yeah, I unfortunately did not include the sacral vertebra, which is off camera. So yeah, this doesn't kind of have the whole neck bone connected to the chin bone thing, but it'll do. I like the look of that. What do you think? I'm quite happy with that. Now, Jen copied my homework and put the femur in the wrong place. Are you implying that I did it wrong? Because I don't do things wrong, as you know. All right. Okay, I think I've, I think I've succeeded in my mission. There it is. Now I just have to look up what is the word for pigeon in Latin. Maybe put it right there. Pigeons. All right, well, that was fun. Um, Kinney, weirdly alive. That's kind of creepy because it's a skeleton. All right. Um, boy, a lot of, a lot of interesting comments here. Let's see. I, sorry, I haven't been paying attention to what you've been writing, but I will go back and look at it. Um, and we'll see. Anne says that she sees birds in a whole new way. Birds, otherwise known as dinosaurs, of course. The more you study birds, I mean, look at those feet. The more you study them, the more you say, there's no question, those are dinosaurs. They're flying dinosaurs. They are garbage-eating dinosaurs. Those are dinosaurs. They're all around us, sitting on the phone wires. Dinosaurs, you know, cockadoodling dinosaurs in your sandwich, dinosaurs. Speaking of which, Thanksgiving coming up, we're going to eat a nice, big, fat, Dinosaur. Dinosaurs. Hollow boned rats. Now, dinosaurs. Dinosaurs. All right. Isn't this how Audubon learned? asks Claire. Well, yeah, I mean, you all know Audubon. He did this fantastic um, series of, of engravings of. Uh, all the birds of North America, fantastic things. And uh, that's how he sort of um, really understood these birds and understood the different species they are and so forth. So, all right. So let me remind you again, this thing coming up, 
You need to join the list to find out about it. Just do it. It's an email. I'm not going to send you more than one in... To, I'm going to send you one tomorrow and then I'm done talking about it. You'll, you'll learn all you need to know. And, uh, but then I'll send you another email the following week that had nothing to do with this thing. And will instead be about something completely... I have no idea what it's going to be about. I haven't written it yet. I'll write something. We'll see. I think people who do it kind of like it. So hopefully you will too. And uh, what else? I want to see your dinosaurs, your pigeon skeletons. Hashtag SBS draw with me. Put it out there. Let me see it. Think of when you come back next Thursday and there's hundreds of pigeon skeletons appearing on the screen and yours is among them. And how amazing that will be. It will be pretty cool. All right. We have entered the waning hours, waning minutes of uh, Draw With Me. It has been really fun to hang out with you today. It's been really fun tackling this pigeon. And I hope you've enjoyed it too. Um, And uh, Kelly, thank you for finally showing up. Man, I've been waiting for you. I, I come here every Thursday. You're never here. Now I can rest assured that you will that you've gotten something out of it okay this is going to be uh the end we've reached it it's here it's 10 59 here in phoenix it is 12 59 in my former home new york city i don't know what time it is where you are but it is one minute until the hour so we are going to leave i'll see you next time thank you so much for drawing with me I had a lot of fun. I hope you did too. And I'll see you next time, next Thursday, noon Eastern time, here on YouTube, here on Facebook. We're going to do it. See you then.